Okay, so what are we, we, we're dealing now, oh, first of all, good morning, everybody. We are learning from Lakuti Torah, a book which is a, which is a, um, a collection of a, of a small number of the speeches that the first Rebbe of Chabad gave over. It says it was collected from 2,000 different chosen, chosen um, uh, speeches that he gave. And what are the speeches that he's talking about? What's he talking about? The speeches that he talking that he's, he's giving the point that he's trying to make is basically always the same point, and that is, what is God? What's a Jew? What's this world for? How does the Torah put the whole thing together? And to, to, to activate all these things together, the Torah, God, the Jewish people, and the world, all of them all together, so that all of it becomes all one amazingly healthy and vibrant and uh, meaningful unit, unit, right? Nowadays, the, 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 the Torah is, um, how do you say, it's, it's not <clears throat> valued the way that it should be. It's the will and the wisdom of the creator of the universe. And God certainly is not valued. And the Jewish people, they don't value themselves even. And the world, because of that, the whole world is suffering. So to put all these four things together, <clears throat> or more exactly the three things, us and God and the world together. And the Torah does that whole thing together, <clears throat> puts them all together. But we have to see the inside of the Torah. We have to see the personal, uh, spiritual, human, real, vibrant, <clears throat> godly uh, uh, facet of the Torah. We have to see that the Torah is not just a book. It's not a separate thing. The Jewish people are separate. And, the, you know, the Jewish people take it or leave it. You know, another nation and the Torah, same thing. Take it or leave it. It's just another book. And God, you know, you want to be religious, take it or leave it. It's no, it's not that important, I mean, really. And the world, the same thing. The world is just, the world is really important. That's the word. And we have to put it in the right, the right perspective. Number one, the world is infinitely more important than we think it is. And the, and the Torah and the Jews and God are totally one. And when they are all revealed, all these when they're all unified together, then we'll see that, like we said before, like I said, the world is infinitely, infinitely more important than we can possibly imagine. Every detail is being created by God every single instant, and everything has meaning. <clears throat> Nothing is being created by accident or by the forces of nature or whatever the forces of nature are being created this is jewish faith but the fact is it's not just a faith it's just it, it's an how do you say an organ of perception just like you can only perceive sights with your eyes and sounds with your ears so godliness you can only perceive by means of faith faith is a aspect <clears throat> a, a sense in human in, the, in, the, in the, the, the gamut of human reality, oh, there was such a word like that, I don't know, anyway, made the whole sentence up, of, of per, human personality, faith, faith is an essential part of human personality. It enables us to sense things which cannot be perceived by our eyes, ears, and brain, and intelligence. But Perceiving means that we do bring it a little bit into our intelligence. In other words, it becomes part of us. So God is something which we can't understand, but he's creating us. He's the most important thing. And the same God is creating the world. And he put us in the world because we have a tremendous function. And that is to reveal the importance of this physical world. And I don't know if we said this last time, but I said it last time. I was thinking about this yesterday. Really before the world was created, nothing existed. There was no existence. Because when God created the world, he created time. So before the world, there was no such thing as before. When God created the world, then he created before and after. Even though it says that spiritually, there is such a thing as before, there's an order of what's called hishtalshalut and everything. But in fact, before the world was created, there was no existence. And every instant of this world is infinitely real. It's not just that the world, you know, it'll be, it'll be here for a few thousand years and then it'll go away, you know, and everybody will go to heaven. It's not so. <clears throat> Somehow or other, 
which this is really, even faith can't grasp this. This is totally incomprehensible. But it's true. That's the whole idea of the raising of the dead. Somehow or other, this world is eternal. It always existed. When existence, when existence began, this world began. Because like we said before, God doesn't really exist, so to speak. He creates all existence. And as soon as existence began, right, this, this world began. Before that, there was no, this makes no sense what I'm saying, but it's the truth. It's the truth. The world, in fact, is infinitely more important than we can possibly imagine. And that's what the Jews are here for, to tell everybody that how important the Jews, is, Jews are. And the non-Jews are part of the world. They're the most important part of the world. Okay, so the Rebbe says, okay, so what do we have to do? We have to sort of change our perspective of the world, change our, what do they call it, paradigms, they call it. We have to, we have to start to think about God. And that's the idea of Hasidic Chabad. What happens, somebody has to mute themselves or tell the people behind them to be quiet because somebody's good, somebody's listening from a tunnel or something and tell the people in the tunnel to be quiet. Okay, so... What do we have to do? We have to start, <clears throat> start removing our thoughts from ourselves and our limited way of understanding and start thinking about the creator. Oh, how do we do that? How do we start thinking about the creator? What's, what's it? I'm going to have to, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to. Somebody here is not, oh, oh, oh there it is. Uh, who is this? Oh, there we go. I'm going to mute somebody. This is nothing personal. I just muted someone. <clears throat> Oh, uh, Mr. Lack, you've just been muted. Like everybody else, everybody else is muted. So don't feel <clears throat> that you've been discriminated against. Everyone is, is being muted. But there's just some background noises over here. Here we go. <clears throat> so we have to start thinking about God. How do you think about God? <clears throat> I think we said this before. What happened really when Adam ate from the tree? People stopped thinking about God. They started thinking about themselves. And that's where all the religions come from. All the religions come from are just selfish. How, what's going to happen to me? I'm going to die. I'm going to go to heaven. I'm going to go to hell. I, 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 I. That was brought about by the sin of Adam and Chava and his wife Eve. <clears throat> they share equal responsibility in this business. Man, as soon, before that, he was only thinking about God. As soon as he ate from the tree, he started thinking about himself. He started worrying, he started blaming other people. It wasn't me, it was my wife, it was the snake, it was the this, right? They started worrying about things. What's gonna happen to me? My wife, the, she ate, she said, I'm gonna die. My husband's gonna marry somebody else. So she gave him to eat. Worry and blame and, and, and <clears throat> they, they hid away, they were shamed. There was all this negative things happened in the world. And that's what Hasidut Chabad is coming to do to start to rectify this. So we can now we can think about God. And when you think about God, all of your paradigms change and you start thinking, let's look at the world from God's point of view and not from my point of view. If you really look at the world from God's point of view, first thing that happens is you feel grateful. Wow, is it? This is a big miracle that I'm alive, that I'm here, that I can see, that I can hear. That I'm, how do you say, somebody told me, as long as I'm on the ground and the ground is not on me, I'm happy. But that I'm, uh, that I'm, uh, I'm above the line. Look in the mirror, somebody looks back. This is a big miracle. <clears throat> First of all. And then you start to think, listen, how can I pay God back for this amazing miracle? You know, there are all these billions of people, they're not paying God back and God is creating them for free. But I want to repay God, right? I want to, I want to do something, give me everything for free. I'll do something for him for free. What do you do? So first of all, you have to appreciate even more. You have to start, the more you appreciate God, the more you love God. And then you love God with all of your heart and all of your might and all of this. Appreciating the fact that I'm being created and I'm being created for a purpose and the world is being created and the world is created for a purpose and that everything reflects this purpose of God in it and how amazing God is that he's created. So that's what he says. <clears throat> that's what the angels are going crazy about. The angels are going crazy. They feel that God is creating the world. We did this yesterday, but we'll just do it again a little bit so that we go to the next page. <clears throat> so that's what it says, that God, that's what we say in, in Psalms. <clears throat> Psalm 145, we say this at least twice a day. <laughs> that God, your kingship is the king of all the worlds. God is the king of the universe. We're supposed to say, religious Jews are supposed to say it 100 times a day. 
king of the world, God, you're the king of the world, king of the universe, king of the world, king of the world. What does it mean? King of the world means that <clears throat> he says, wait a minute. Perish, what does it mean? Malchutcha, the chayos kalolomos, that the life and the very existence of all the worlds, this comes from the lowest aspect of God. This is what's called God's kingship. In the 10th Sfirot, Malchut is the lowest. Ha'aret Shemot, just a ray of God's name. The Lokomo, not like the soul in, in lives of the body, that the essence of the life of the, of the soul is put into the body, right? You stub your toe. It's your toe that gets stubbed. It's me. It's my soul feels it, right? That my soul feels that it's I feel it. That's my I. But when a person of Omahusa, Vatsmusa, but God's essence, this existed before the world was created. And what does that mean? There's no such thing as before the world was created. There was, before the world, there was nothing. So God is nothing. What does it mean? So God is really, what did we say? He creates all existence that there is. This is totally incomprehensible. We don't even understand the spiritual. It says that if a person would see an angel, he would pass out from fear. And God creates the angels. The angels are like, like nothing to God. It's like, like pieces, grains of sand or something. <clears throat> and we can't create grains of sand, right? You can, they, they can take, you could take energy and make it into mass, and mass into energy. That's, I mean, I'm not a, you'll see, I'm not a physicist. But as far as I know is that when you start putting energy into an atom, which is, I guess, matter, so you more energy you put into it, you want to get it up to the speed of light or something like that. And so then it gets bigger and bigger, it gets heavier. So the energy transforms into matter and matter transforms into energy. But you can't take nothing and make from nothing energy or matter or anything. You can't, we don't even know what nothing is. And, and that's the situation before God created the world. There was nothing, there was no time, there was no consciousness, there was no being. There was only the creator, which we have no idea what that means. And the creator reflects himself in this world, but it's just a reflection. When we start thinking about this whole amazing world, that people just go berserk for this world, right? Somebody gets overcharged in the in the in your in the, in the mar, what is it the, a store ten dollars fifteen dollars you go out of your mind ten dollars you dirty you took my ten dollars you know how many much money there is in the world there's a lot of money in the world and God creates the whole thing from nothing God is creating me <laughs> what am I getting excited for ten dollars what am I getting excited for ten billion dollars God is creating, me is creating everything. So of course, I mean, the $10 is, is worth something. There's no doubt about it. But it's not reason that your soul should be put into it. You tell the, the cashier, listen, I think that you overcharged me. You know, ten. look at this, this is the price. This is, I think, you know, check the thing. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm right. And if he's still, so he stole, oh, God will give you back the money. It's no big deal. Of a mahus of muso, God's essence, is high, higher. King David, he was the king, right? He was the king of, of, of Israel. And that means he owned everything, everything. And he was deposed by his son. He had the right, he didn't say, oh, my castle, I want my castle, I want my money back, where's my power, right? He's just crying out to God, God, please, I want to serve you. And if I get killed, I can't serve you, right? I don't mind losing the money, I don't mind losing. I don't mind losing anything, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not serving you, right? I have to run away. I have to think about myself all the time. That's a true, right? <clears throat> a true person who's truly connected to the creator. Wherever he is, he is an emissary. He's a poor emissary. He's a rich emissary. He's a, a healthy emissary. He's a sick emissary. But wherever he is, he's a shliach. But the essence of God is totally removed from anything in the world. So everything in the world is tremendously, tremendously important to God. And with the more God is important to us, then we react to the world like God reacts to the world. The ain't shumed of malbisho. Nothing can possibly hide over God at all. He's past, present, and future without any change at all. Like it says, Ani Hashem lo shenisi. I am God. It's not relevant that God can change. God creates the world from nothing, right? So if he creates the world from nothing, it means that the world is nothing. So the world is not an additional thing to God. The world is nothing, right? Take $5 and subtract nothing. How much do you have left? Nothing. Subtract a thousand nothings. From five dollars, what do you got left? Five dollars, right? Something must be wrong here. I subtracted five thousand zeros from five. It still remains five. How can it possibly be? So that's just mathematically. The world is made from nothing. So if God obviously didn't change because nothing happened, <laughs> right? So how do we exist? It's a miracle. We can't understand it. But the fact is that God's reality is infinite reality, and He cares about us. He creates us. 
They were the same God that before the world was created. You're the same God after the world, without any change at all. Nothing can hide over him at all. Only the light, only the, the, the whole world is just God's, <clears throat> the, the, the uh, array of godliness alone. And sometimes you can feel this a little bit, you know, even some of you hear beautiful music, you, you look in a child's eyes, you see a sunset, you, 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 you see something, you know, a, a, a beautiful sight. There's, you meet somebody that you really like, somebody that you really love, right? A good friend, your mother, your father, your son, your daughter, your, 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 your brother, your sister. <clears throat> love is something that's above time. Right? Suddenly, it's something wakes up inside of your soul. Courage, something wakes up inside of a person. There's no time, there's no this. He doesn't care about what's a little sort of a glimpse of the creator, a little bit, right? That you're not imprisoned by time and space and selfishness. And that's what it means. That's what it means. Your kingship is the kingship of all the worlds. I know Shekhal, almost all the worlds, Abshem, Elop, Alafim, even though that the worlds are millions and millions of worlds, thousands and ten thousands of worlds. Like it says, is there any number to his, the, how do you say, the, 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 the encampments, the camps, or whatever, the groups of angels? It says that there's uh, 100 million, whatever, angels in every encampment. So there's a limit. He says, yeah, it's true. There's a limit in every camp, but there's no limit to camps. Each one has a hundred million, but there's an unlimited number of camps. You know, or it says from the earth to the heavens, this is 500 years, some sort of a spiritual term. Nevertheless, even though there's infinite numbers of worlds and the worlds are infinitely big and there's all these angels, nevertheless, they are totally incomparable regarding God's light. God created the whole thing from his word. And we're serving God here. When you do a commandment, you're doing what God wants. God himself, you're giving God pleasure. This is even more incomprehensible. <clears throat> okay, one minute, one minute. Let's get this thing over. We've got to turn the page. Here we go, next page. Okay, so this is, you know, this is not just poetry the Rebbe is talking about or philosophy or, you know, the Rebbe is trying to show us how, how uh, you know, uh, ironic the whole thing is, you know, we think there's a world and there's not a world. And uh, uh, The Rebbe is trying to tell us how to make our lives meaningful. <clears throat> how, first of all, lucky we are to be created and how amazing it is that we can repay our creator. And even more, how do we create our, repay our creator? By living a brave, loving, meaningful, appreciative, creative life huh? by, the, by not being lazy so it says God is incomparable one if you take let's say 25 trillion to the 25 trillionth power right so there's it's got a comparison to the number one of a rub of rub but if you take a trillion to the trillionth power whatever Regarding infinity, <laughs> so infinity, league of all, it's in so much, there's no comparison whatsoever, right? It's like saying how many, let's just take a, a very mundane example, a trillion to the trillionth power. How many trillion to the trillionth power goes into mathematics? How many trillions of trillionth power does it take to make mathematics, to fill up mathematics? That's ridiculous. There's a, it's, it's a totally different what do you mean? A trillion to the trillionth power is a mathematical term. So how many trillion to the trillionth power is there in mathematics? So that, uh, it's ridiculous. And that's just talking about physical things. That's intellectual. How much reality, spiritual, physical, is there in a, the ray of the creative force of God that creates it? Nothing. Okay, so what are we trying to understand? How far away God is? Yes, but also how close God is. This God that's infinite and infinitely incomprehensible, he is actually reacting to what we do and he cares about what this is who we're praying to. And when a person thinks about this, you pray a little bit differently. That's what King David, you start to understand where King David was at <clears throat> when he wrote these Psalms. And King David, he was the forerunner of Mashiach. Mashiach is appreciation of God. 
loving God, fearing God, being in awe of God, believing in God, acting the way God wants, thinking the way God wants, speaking the way God wants. That's the book of Tanya. That's what the Tanya is. The whole Tanya is this. Al Yudin, by means of Shema Sigim et Kolonel, by means of understanding and trying to grasp everything we said before. Al Yudin said, by means of this, all of the angels are bitl tamid. The Al Yudin is bonanos, and by means of us thinking about this, but Omeka Das, when we think about it very deeply, that means reality. Omeka Das means, is this stuff really real? I mean, really, God is really creating us. Come on. This is just, you know, Kabbalistic stuff. You know, Jewish comparative religions. This is what the Jews think. But the other thing, huh? Is that what this is? You know, so we don't take it really seriously. Huh? Like somebody said, if you learn the tractate Gitin, it's the laws, it's, it's one of the tractates of the Talmud that talks about divorce. So just because you learn all the laws of divorce means you got to get divorced. The same thing, so you learn about God, it means you have to believe in God. Right? That means that you take it to your heart, that you take it to your heart, that you really feel truly, this is really, this is really amazing. This is, how do you say, freaky. God is really creating me every instant right now. Wow. And God really expects things from me. And God really empowers me to make this world a precious place to show how close he is. This is amazing. That's called that. That means to take it. It's real. As I then, Mimela, <clears throat> automatically, as soon as you take it to your heart, really, then automatically a person comes to Ratsa. He comes to run. He desires. Ratsa means to running. To come desires God. The Kriyashma. And he starts to love God. Love Hashem Elokecha B'chalavavcha with all of your heart. Let's say it, Mia Meitzorim. You go out of your own limitations of your own little egotistical world. Shekulam Heim B'bechinus Gavul. That everything, even the angels, they're in the, they're creations. They're limited. Like it says that they go 500 years. <clears throat> it says that each world is 500 years from each other world. What that means is as whether this is spiritual 500 years or it's spiritual, physical world, physical or spiritual, who begins or nevertheless, spiritual limitations and physical limitations by God is the same thing. They cover over the creator and they seem to be a separate being. But the Barbi Finiatsmo and on its own. Rakla Dovka Bo only to cling to God. Shu believable that God is unlimited. Is in so mamish, totally infinite, really, and this God is creating me and you. And this God wants us to love Him. He wants us to appreciate Him. <clears throat> That's what God wants. God has desires. If God didn't have desires, we wouldn't be here. God wants to create us. We're created, so to speak, in His image. God has an image. Well, he was creating us. So it must be have some sort of a creative power. We said he has his word, must have a mouth. Right? What does it mean that all these things? It means that we're, it's totally incomprehensible what we're talking about, but it's infinitely, infinitely real. That's why it's incomprehensible. Because our comprehension only deals with things that are not really real. They're just things that are relevant to us. There's these people that write me, uh, and, you know, sometimes emails and Science, what about science? What about science? What about science? Science, 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 science. So I said, listen, first of all, science is a very good thing. What's wrong with science? But science is not truth. Science, by definition, is not truth. Science, by definition, is theory. It's just the most practical theories. If somebody comes up with a better theory, something more workable in the world, then you have to throw it away, right? Somebody proves that right, the, the moon is really made of green cheese. It reacts like green cheese. It has the, 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 the consistency of green cheese. It has the, the, the volume and the mass of green cheese. So you can say, well, I guess, you know, if, if all these things seem to prove it, then it's green cheese, right? It's, and I, we thought not. Or somebody comes up and they prove, no, that the moon is really the center of the world. Moon is the center. What do you mean? I thought that they, here, I came up with a, a better theory and this proves it. Look at the numbers, look at the, this. Okay, got to throw everything away. There was for a long time, there used to be theories that what goes, I'm saying I'm not a scientist, so don't accuse me of being one, and this could be wrong, but there was a theory, there's this big problem, you know, what is between the earth and the planets? What is there? 
you know, it's like an empty space. So what's in the space? So, and, and you know, what causes like light to travel from one place to another? And, you know, Newton says there's this gravitational pull between the, 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 all the planets that they have masses. So, but there must be some sort of thing. So they thought there was ether, ether. And they had all sorts of, uh, of proofs that there were ether and theories that were ether and this, and came along whoever, Einstein or whoever it is, and he proved that there's, there's no such thing as ether. Doesn't exist, right? The theory is not provable. It's no ether, right? They thought, people thought this, people thought this, the cause of this disease is this, is germs or something like that. Suddenly they realized, no, it's, it's all, uh, uh, you say, uh, emotional. It's only emotions and emotions that there's no such thing as germs, there's no such thing as viruses. There's no, it's all emotional. If somebody really comes up with a thing like that and says, no, the cause of, of the measles is the planet Mars. And he comes up with a thing, then if, it, if they can, if you can bring some sort of, Proofs, no matter how flimsy they are, but if they're proofs, then you have to leave every all of your ideas behind because the essence of science is workable theories. And if somebody comes up with something more workable, but that's good. You have to know how to work with the world, right? With the theories that I, that Newton came up with, they they, they they shoot rockets up into the into this right the, the theories of propulsion or whatever it is and resistance. So with all these theories, it works. But if someone comes up with something better, they say this guy Telsa, he came up with a better theory of what is gravity and others did, then they, they shut him down. They didn't want people to know. If his theory works, so good people will lose, you know, trillions and trillions of dollars, whatever it is, and the oil industry will go down the drain or this. But nevertheless, if it's true, they have to use it. <clears throat> they have to use it because science is not fact. Science is simply practical theory. And if somebody comes up with a better practical theory, you have to throw away everything that you thought was true in the past. That's true. But here we're talking about, but, but under the other hand, science is comprehensible. This what we're talking about is not comprehensible until now. Now we have talking about God, we're thinking about God and the more you can comprehend this incomprehensible thing of God, the more you come to love God. Because the fact is we can't comprehend ourselves either. Everyone that's, that's in this class is alive. You know what that means? Where do you get your life from? Where does it come from? Uh, you ever see a soul? You ever see a person say, saw their soul? And we're here alive. It's the most incomprehensible thing in the world, life, and it's the most practical thing, and we're alive. When a person starts to connect himself to the fact that there's a creator and that it's incomprehensible, it's above our understanding, and a little bit he does comprehend it, that's called going out of Egypt. But Saint Mina made starting to go out of our own egotistical limitations of <clears throat> thinking that intellect and science, and that, that's the end. That's the boundaries, that's all sciences, that's, that's, the, that's the frame, nothing's outside of that. Not to use your power of faith, of Edmuna. That's what it was in, in Egypt, it says, Paro said, I don't know God. Shashem Hashem, that the name Yudke Vavke, which is past, present, and future, without any change, Paro said, that's not for me. I know I'm a world person. If, if I get pleasure from it, I'm for it. If it's a thing that I have to devote myself to for no reason whatsoever, I have to repay God because he's creating me. Come on, let's say, you know, what if I don't pay, repay him? Then what, he's going to stop creating me? Or look, none of these people in Egypt believe in God and God's creating them all. What do I have to believe in God? No, you don't. I don't know God. I know the name Elohim that covers over and conceals and makes me into a selfish, egotistical, natural, normal person. <clears throat> That's what Paro said. I don't know Yud Kevavke, this name of God. Shadat, I don't know. This dot means feeling, connection. Like I said, the man knew his wife, right? Adam knew his wife. Knew he means a connection, a real intimate connection that gives birth to, in our case, emotions. In Adam's case, it gave birth to his children. Shadat Hashem, and that knowing God, the begin is gullus. That our connection to God is in exile. That's paro. That's what it means to Kriya Shema. That's what Shechotem. That's what it, when we finish, when we say Kriya Shema, I am God, your God. That took you out of Egypt. I am God. The only way you can go out of your own selfishness is to realize where your selfishness comes from. It's a creation by God. So it's not a bad thing, selfishness, but you have to create, you have to connect it to why God is creating it, to the creator. That's what the rabbis say, Tefilis Abos Tiknum. That's what the rabbis say, that the prayers that we pray in the morning come from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, again, this is one of the main functions of Mashiach. Eventually, the whole world will be thinking about God. 
the whole entire world will be grateful to their creator. People's minds will be healthy. They'll be healthy. And people won't be selfish anymore because it's a lie. Being selfish is simply a lie, right? Our self that we have is this amazing, amazing, beautiful gift of love that God has given to every human being, every animal also, but animals can't appreciate it. They don't have free will. And every human being will turn to, wow, my creator is creating me. Thank you, God. You know, what am I worrying about going to heaven? What's going to happen to me after I die? The fact that I'm here right now is a big miracle. I want more. But right? everything I'm getting is getting for free, right? I want to perish, avot. So it says, okay, so that's what the prayers, it says the fathers established. We pray three times a day. Religious Jews pray three times a day. The morning prayer corresponds to Abraham, the afternoon prayer to Isaac, Yitzchak, and the evening prayer compares to Yaakov. And these are also compared to three aspects of our emotions. Abraham, he brought the love of God in the world. He manifested it. Yitzchak manifested the fear of God in the world. And Jacob, Yaakov, was the beauty or the mercy of God in the world. We'll explain this in a second. That is connected to the prayers. That's what it means, love and fear and mercy. These are, that's what Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I know, should call a tefillah that every prayer that we pray is begimel mine pasukim. There's these three types of sentences. In the morning, for instance, all, most of the, the big part of the prayers are the Psalms of King David. But also there's Psalms, there's, there's prayers that the men of the great assembly, that they assembled something like, what is it, 500 years after King David. Hainu, pasukim, these are sentences there are sentences that uh, in, in prayer, in the, uh, in the morning, afternoon, there are sentences that we express our love. That's like Abraham. For instance, in Kriya Shema, we say you should love God with all of your heart by means of thinking, like we said before, by thinking deeply, you come to love God. This is Abraham. Abraham is the thing of love. This is the thing of Abraham, that he loved God. He was a person in the world that showed that it is possible for a, per, for a human being to love God and to conduct his life loving God and that showing that that is true love. That's true life. That is true life. It's not just religious life. It's not just Jewish life. It is real, true life that you appreciate and you love God. Abraham, and he wanted to get the whole world to come to love God for the benefit of the whole world. He didn't want to do it so that he'll go to heaven, he'll get another brownie point or whatever they call it, but he's going to get another person you know, to convert to his religion. He just wanted everyone to realize who they are and that they're being created by God. That's what Mashiach is going to do. Everyone is being created by God. No one is going to think about heaven. No one is going to think about anything except for positive things. How can I serve the creator of the universe right now. And by means of this, afterwards, after coming to love God, afterwards comes, <clears throat> yeah, the, 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 there will be these words, learning Torah, the words that I command you, etc. You'll say the words of Torah, we're talking about Jews here, in a way of love. Even though in the second chapter, that's the second chapter of Shema. Even though the second chapter it also says, what do you mean you should learn Torah? It says in the second chapter, the second paragraph of Shema Yisrael, <clears throat> that if you do what I say, then you'll gather up your wheat and etc. And you're working your fields. I thought just the Jews are supposed to be learning Torah all the time. It says, no, your Torah will be the main thing in your life. And the work that you do will be secondary. That's called loving God. That's what it means. Man is a, it's a, sort of man is a tree of a field. A man, human beings are like trees that are planted in the ground, that the main thing is the fruits. What are the fruits to come out? The Torah and the commandments. But nevertheless, a, a tree also has thorns and leaves and a trunk of the, the eker. But the main thing is the fruits. The same thing is also a person. The main thing of a person is the fruits, namely the Torah and the commandments and the good deeds that you do. Like it says, my pre mitzvahs. It says the, 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 the fruits of a person are the commandments that he does. Zeu, that's what it means in your Torah, 
that you're learning Torah will be set. Once you love God, then you want to do what God says, and especially you want to connect your mind to God's mind. That's learning Torah. This is for Jews. This part is for Jews. Meshar called Surahi Agufo and all the rest of the needs of your body, they are Kamo Ha'alim. They're like the trees in regarding to the fruit. And you do everything because of love. That's the thing of Abraham. Abraham's thing is, wow, God, you're so good. I just want to love you. I just want to give you. What about what I'm going to get in return? No, everything that I've got is, is, is more than I deserve. I have two eyes, a nose. Oh, I got a nose. You know what it would be without a nose? Amazing. I got an arm, another arm. Look at this. I got fingers on my hands. This is amazing gifts I got. Now I want to use all these things, my nose and my eyes and my hands, to just to repay God for what I've got. I love you so much, God. You're creating me. That's Abraham. He was the first person to realize this, the first person to not be selfish in the world since Adam messed it up. Uh, Adam had a, threw a little bit of selfishness into the into the stew, and he put the whole world into the stew afterwards. And Abraham was the first person not to be selfish. <clears throat> it says that Noah was also a big tzaddik. Noah was also a, a, a big tzaddik, but it says that Noah kept to himself. Noah, he kept to himself. He built a big ark. He didn't go out and try to convince people, "Hey, guys, stop sinning, stop this." He kept to himself. He did exactly what God told him to, not more. Abraham did more, more. It said that he went out and he, he, that God put him through all these terrible tests and disappointments and frustrations. And God, Abraham said, do whatever you want to, to me, God. I'm not thinking about myself at all, only about you. That's love, unconditional love. The Cain also, Yitzchak, also Yitzchak. Bechin is gevura, shenasem yizeh, bechin is yira, fear. Benafsho, pachad Yitzchak. The fear is... By the way, I mean, I, I, I'll, this is a, just a, a parenthetical thing. Like I told you, I read a lot from Professor Viktor Frankl. So he talks about love, and he says that love is a very essential thing to a human being to put meaning into this. And he says that you can, what is true love? True love is that you love someone uh, unconditionally, even, God forbid, if that person is sick, or even if that person is not even alive anymore. You get receive absolutely nothing from that person, nothing whatsoever. Just you appreciate the fact, you appreciate the the uniqueness, the humanness of another person. That's called love, and of course, sometimes it, it you know it, it clicks more. You love your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your wife, your your children a little bit differently than you love your good friend, a little next door neighbor. You love, it's a little, it's a different type of a love, but it doesn't necessarily depend on physical. When you see them, you want to hug them, but it doesn't necessarily depend on physical. And it could be that the person isn't even physically there at all. Right? You remember there's people in, 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 what, in the, or friends in war or whatever, they remember the bravery of the other person. They remember a person's personality. His smile is what? So that's what's called Avram, loving God, even though there's no reason to love God. God disappointed Abraham until the degree that God even said, okay, Abraham, the whole reason you're alive is just to spread godliness. And the only one that got your message is your son Yitzchak, right? And you waited for a hundred years to give birth to Yitzchak. Wonderful. And he's going to carry out your message. And he's going to have children like the stars of heaven. Just one thing, before he gets married and has these children, take him and kill him. And Abraham said, oh, okay, no problem. That's what you want, God. That's what I'll do. That's called the Akedah. To Abraham had absolutely nothing to gain from this except for what he's, whatever God wants, I'm doing. And I do it, but he did it happily in love. That's Abraham serving God, even though there's no body, even though there's no just the fact, the essence of what God is, the, how good God is in his essence. You love God, unconditional. And Yitzchak, Yitzchak, that's Gavura. Gavura is. That's fear, fear, and the said that's called pachad yitzchak. <clears throat> fear, fear means that he's afraid to go against God. He's afraid to let the world remain as it is. It says that yitzchak he he dug wells. He dug wells, and then he went to a place where there was a desert, and he could not stand to le leave the the place as a desert. He had to make it into an oasis, into a 
a place where there could people could eat, people could drink, animals could come, make a city there. Right? He was afraid to remain. Uh, what do they call it? There's a word in Hebrew. It's called adish. He was afraid to remain. Ah, there's a really good word for it in English. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Um, all right, I'll think of it later. I'll think of it later. I'll think of them probably in the middle of Shimon Ezra. But he, he, he was afraid to remain inactive. That's not the word I wanted, but insensitive. That's also not the word I want. He was afraid to remain insensitive. But afraid. Indifferent. Oh, that's the word I want. Indifferent. He was afraid to remain indifferent. Okay, your problem, not my... <laughs> Bechinus Yaakov and the level of Jacob, Yaakov is Bechinus Rachmanus, mercy. Hainu Shalibo Kaleva Evan, even a person whose heart is like stone, Sha'av Shemit Bonin, even though that he thinks about all these things about God, he does not come to love God in Kriyashma. I mean, it takes a bit of concentration. If you think about anything about the world, you're not going to come to love God. You have to really think. You know, God is creating me. God is infinitely good. God is this, and you, you have to—it's a—you have to sit and think. You have to be happy. You have to have a happy, positive way of thinking with no disturbances whatsoever, right? And then you can come to. This is not a necessary prerequisite. You can think about God even in the most noisy, terrible places. Also, it's possible. But nevertheless, if you're attached to any of those disturbances in the world, so you can't think about God, and everybody's attached. So what about a person that he thinks about all these things that we just talked about, and he has no love of God? What doesn't arouse nothing? Liot Yeshva Davar. Nevertheless, he still is something in himself because his heart is like a heart of stone. So what does he do? or Rachamim Rabim to have mercy. You say, God, listen. I would really like to love you. I'd really like to be a normal person, but I don't love you, and I'm not a normal person. I mean, I would really like to, but. You know, every time I start thinking about this, I, I, you know, thinking about you, God, I think about the, you know, wow, I wonder how if I left the water running in my house and, you know, somebody scratched my car and he refused to pay me back and my next door neighbor and my landlord and my wife and my mother-in-law and all these other things, right? And I'm thinking about all this and what about, you know, I have my pants and the, oh, the cleaners, I forgot to get the pants from the cleaners. I have to go this and this and all these other thoughts come into your mind and that's real to you. Thinking about God, I don't know. You know, so there's nowhere. So what do you do? You say, "Listen, God, you see, I'm I'm trying, and I don't really even know how to try." You know, I mean, I just can't get my thoughts locked into this. So God, have mercy on me. That's Yaakov. It says Yaakov's mercy, <clears throat> and he and God has mercy. Like it says, Yaakov is put as Avram. It says that Jacob, he redeemed Abraham. Abraham is love. Jacob, Yaakov is mercy. When you can't arouse love in your soul for God, you can't come to really appreciate God. So you say, listen, God, have a little bit of mercy on me that I can. That's by means of the sentences that we say in prayer in about mercy. The God, you are very high. With your great mercy, have mercy on us. Now, again, I have to say this again, and I don't think this ever has effect, but maybe it does. Yeah, if you want to pray to God, you have to translate the words. You have to translate the words of prayer. It's very, very important if you want to come to have a, an idea to arose this love of God, you have to translate the prayers. That's what we say, Avinu, Ava Rachman, our fathers, father of mercy, merciful father, have mercy on us, Give, put in our heart understanding. This is the blessing right before Shema Yisrael, we say, that we can understand things. <clears throat> even though I'll tell you a story that contradicts that, a well-known story, <clears throat> but it's, it's essential that you translate the words of prayer if you want to pray properly. So there was a person that came to the Baal Shem Tov, and the Baal Shem Tov went from a place to a place, and he went, came to the Baal Shem Tov and he said, Baal Shem Tov, uh, listen, I, I pray every day, but I don't know what I'm supposed to pray. Somebody told me the other day that you're not supposed to, there's certain prayers you're supposed to say you know, at certain times. So the Baal Shem Tov said, I mean, I don't understand. What What have you been praying up to now? You see, you pray every day. He said, I say the whole entire prayer book. 
a thick, big prayer book with all the prayers of all the holidays in, in Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah and a God of, the, the, a God of Passover and, and, and everything. I say the whole entire thing. So every day you say the whole entire Seder. Yeah, I mean, obviously the man didn't understand what he was saying and he didn't. Th- so the Baal Shem Tov said, listen, I'll tell you what, listen, I'm putting markers in your, give me the Seder. Here's a marker. I'm going to write on this one. You know, in, in I guess in, in Russian, whatever language you understood. So listen, this is Passover, and here is Purim, and here is the morning prayer, evening prayer, afternoon prayer. This is Shabbat in the morning, and this. And he, he writes everything, and he puts papers in this, and he says, "No, listen, you you go home, you go home, and what I wrote on these papers, you write in your sitter, or you stick the papers in there so that it sticks there." Good, okay, and then you'll get somebody to translate the words for you, and you'll see what you're saying. Thank you very much, Baal Shem Tov. I really appreciate it. The Baal Shem Tov, he left the person. The Baal Shem Tov was walking, and he came to a river, and he had to go across the river, and there was no bridge, so he took his handkerchief, and he put it on the river, and he said whatever he said, and he went across the river on his handkerchief, on his handkerchief. <clears throat> this was also done by the, the, the Baba Sali, they say, the Baba Sali, the Rev, uh, I guess, Yaakov Abachatzer, Yisrael Abachatzer, that he put a, a, a blanket, and a, a, a carpet, and he flew on a carpet to Israel. That's what they say. <clears throat> In other words, it's the thing that he did. Okay, so the Baal Shem Tov went over the river, and he, and he, he got onto the other side. And all of a sudden, he hears some, someone yelling, Baal Shem Tov, Baal Shem Tov, Baal Shem Tov. Right, and he looks back, and here he sees this fellow that he just talked to, and he put the things in his sitter, and he's running across the water. Baal Shem Tov, wait, he's waving the sitter. Baal Shem Tov, wait, wait a minute, he's running <laughs> on the water. So the Baal Shem Tov stops, and he says, what, what, "What did you? How did you do that?" And the man said, "No, Baal Shem Tov, please, you have to help me. Listen, you put all those papers in the thing, and all the papers." My, the sitter fell down as soon as you left. It fell down and a wind blew and it blew all the papers. I don't know what to say every day. <laughs> so the Baal Shem Tov said, listen, maybe you should just continue <laughs> what you're saying on your, on your own or maybe you should, maybe Baal Shem Tov wrote it again, whatever it was. The point is, is that the man had absolutely no idea what he was saying, but he was so devoted to the creator of the universe that the world was not an, a, an, uh, a disturbance to him to get to the Baal Shem Tov. There was a river. He didn't think about the river. He ran on the river. I don't advise you to try it at home. But the point of the story is, and that's the story. That's going to be the story for this morning. <clears throat> that saying, just saying the words without understanding, that's also good. But you can't do that for long. You know, this person was very simple. So he did the maximum. By us, that's not the maximum, right? Even though it might, you know, interfere with our running across, walking on water. But the fact is, is that we have to try to understand to our maximum. Who wants to walk across water anyway? I mean, nowadays they got bridges everywhere. It's not such a big deal. Perish, kihine kasiv, it is written, ki lo yireni adam v'chai, a person can't see me and live. V'omer is on the rabbi say, v'chayutam in ruim. A person, when he's alive, he can't see God. But v'metatam, when, when a person passes away, he can. Because when a person is alive, then his soul is in a body. And the body has all these impulses and things, so, and it, it disturbs. When a person, when the soul goes out of the body, as I roam, him, then he can see God. He can see that really the fact is that God is past, present, and future without any change. The ain't shum nothing can conceal God at all. <clears throat> and this is where we're going to stop today. Nothing could possibly conceal God. Okay, let's just a little bit more, a little bit more. All right, good, good, why not? We'll try, let's go, let's go. It says, then when a person dies, so all of a sudden he realizes that, wow, you know, God is creating me and that God is infinite and that God is above time and that, <clears throat> and that all that I thought, as I then, a bush of adol, then all of a sudden he gets very, very ashamed. Ad ma'od, ad shekol machshavatov, gomagotov, Suddenly a person thinks, wow, you know, I'm now I'm dead. And the soul is eternal, right? The soul is eternal. So a person, when he dies, is that person still retains his identity. I mean, it's, you know, Uncle Joe is the one who died. So when Uncle Joe dies, it's Uncle Joe realizes, wow, you know, 
I, I just lived for like a hundred years and the whole hundred years, I really thought that there wasn't really God and that this world was the, that was what was real. And God was at the best, you know, this nice idea, religious idea. And suddenly realized, well, all the times that I got angry and I got frustrated and I had, you know, lust and I got, I got lazy and it is because of the world. Suddenly you realize <clears throat> that I thought that the world was something separate on itself. But who chutzpah, and it was big chutzpah, I was, I actually denied God's existence. Wow, you know, that that's terrible. How did I do a thing like that? So a person could say, listen, the reason I did it, like Adam did, what did Adam do? He ate from the tree, he said, listen, it's my fault. You made the woman, you gave it. A person could say, listen, the reason I did it, because God, you gave me this uh, impulses, and you gave me my ego, and you gave me this. He says, but then, when a person passes away, he realizes, listen, I got a million excuses, but the fact of the matter is, is I did the wrong things, right? I didn't do what I was supposed to do. Lochen, Bakashateno, our request is, with your great mercy, God, have mercy on me. We're saying now, listen, why do I have to wait until I die to realize what the truth was? God put in my heart a little bit of understanding now, the having dover me talk dover, that I can understand one thing from within another thing. What does it mean from within? The inside of everything. Even though my soul is in the body, nevertheless, I'll be able to understand and I'll be able to think that really everything is totally negated to God. And just like it was before the world was created without any change whatsoever, and if I think that right now, then I won't be ashamed forever and ever. So that there won't be this tremendous shame. <clears throat> That's what Yaakov Asher Pares Avram. That's what it means, having mercy. And I'll tell the story again, which I've told 50 times, but I'm going to tell it again very shortly. That before, this, this was a thing, one of the, there was like 15 different reasons why I became an observant Jew. But one of them was, is I used to be in a rock and roll band. And I was always the singer. And there was one place that I was singing and I played the bass also. Anyway, it was this sort of country and Western redneck bar in Ypsilanti or someplace, I think like that, because I lived in, 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 Ann, Ar in Ann Arbor. And it was this sort of really raunchy bar. And uh, they closed at 12, but they, they paid us extra. They stayed later. And finally, at the end of this whole thing, there was, um, you know, everybody had already gone. And the, the men, they, they went there just to pick up girls. And, and it was, there was left like these three drunken guys, young guys. And all of a sudden, there were these, it's, it seems that there were these old ladies that were just waiting in the back room for this situation. I guess every night there was always a few drunk guys. And they came out and I wasn't drunk and you know, I was playing music. And these ladies came out and they were like hideous. They had this just, you know, and the, the, this lipstick, everything was just, you know, <laughs> and these dresses were like, you know, velvet. It was just, it was just abhorrent, I can't say. And they grabbed these young guys and they started dancing with them. And these young fellows that were there, their eyes lit up like, you know, they had just found the greatest treasure in the world because they were totally drunk. And I'm sure that if they, and these ladies were also sure that if they were a little bit less drunk, they would not be so enthusiastic about this whole business. And I thought to myself, you know, I mean, I was not religious. I was not, I thought to myself, wow, how a person can deceive himself. They were just excited to the essence of their soul by these ladies. And the ladies knew that they were just taking advantage of their stupor, that these the young guys, I thought, but they were really truly, you know, enthusiastic about this. I realized it would just struck me how a person can fool himself, how it's possible for a person to fool himself. Tomorrow morning, they'll wake up and they'll be so ashamed. But what did I do with it? It's the same thing, says the Rebbe, that that's the point over here. A person can become, he does things in the world. And finally, when a person passes away, he goes, oi, 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 what did I do? How did I do it? In order that afterward, there shouldn't be the shame so therefore, we ask mercy from God. God, please open my heart, open my mind so they see the truth now. And that's going out of Egypt. And we'll talk about that more, God, tomorrow. What this has to do with counting the Omer. That's what we're talking about, counting the Omer. That's supposed to be the whole thing. We're talking about going out of Egypt, right? And what about counting the Omer? That we'll talk about tomorrow. And let us go now to <clears throat> learn Tavar Malchut. Uh,
One second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good, good. Let's go. What's going on over here? All right, let me like this.